Hey guys, Wix100 here, and today I'm going to show you how to use different filters on GIMP. So, first I would like to say I'm not going to go through every single filter on GIMP, partially because I don't know how to use every single filter on GIMP. I haven't experimented with all of them, but I will be going through the filters that I used that I use most often when editing things with GIMP. So, the first filter I'm going to show is a blur filter and it's a Gaussian blur. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, I'm guessing on the pronunciation. So as you make the size bigger, it gets blurrier. It's that simple. So size is at zero, there's no blur to it. Gets bigger, the fuzzier it gets. And you can even go past the maximum on the bar and it gets bigger and bigger and let's say 1000 and now it's just a big green blob so let's actually take that back down to 100 and actually 50 sure let's go with that okay next filter is also a blur but this one is a bit different pixelize so you know how when like on TV when they pixelize someone's face that's basically that so you can change the offset to change where the pixel starts and end for X and Y you can change the um, width and height of the pixel so you make it one and it's a one-to-one -one scale and it is doing nothing essentially you can make it 3000 and now it's actually um, loading slower but it's since this picture is smaller than 3000 it's gonna be just one solid color so let's change that down to there my logo is now pixelized and actually something that I didn't show you is you can turn the preview off and you can actually set it to split view and you can drag this so you can actually see what it looks like before and after the um, effect the filter okay so now that I've gone through the two um, blurs that I use most often time to move on to the distortions I don't really use any of the enhancements I'm sure I could I just haven't needed a use for it yet so the first one is polar coordinate and so what that does is it takes an image and it basically stretches it so as you can see this is the left side of the original image and it stretched it and wrapped it around and this is the, now the right side of the image so it's like if you I don't know took something rectangular and wrapped it around in a circular motion I'm not sure what the real world equivalent would be but as you can see there's the top part of the tail there's the bottom part of the tail and actually a um, effect of it going clockwise is it kind of also mirrored the image um, unintentionally so you can also split view it that it's less effective with this one um, but you can also offset the X and Y as well so let's hit OK with that and now GIMP is starting to slow down on me there we go so let's go to another distort and go to ripple ripple is kind of self-explanatory it makes a little ripple you can change the amplitude to make it up and down more or you can lower the amplitude to make it up and down less so let's move that back to there okay the next one is very similar to Ripple, except it's called Wave. So, distorts and 
waves. So waves is similar to ripple except ripple is only shifting the image up and down. Wave does it in a circular motion. So you can increase the amplitude and see how it's stretching the image back and forth going around and change the amplitude down let's say 37 and it's doing it a lot less now and so that's done with the distorts let's go to light and shadow and do a supernova supernova essentially creates a star and so you can change the X and Y you can actually click that and I'm pretty sure that allows you to yeah so you can click this cursor and when you click the cursor the point that you click is where the supernova goes to you can change the radius by dragging this or you can actually change the radius manually and you can also change how many spokes are on it so one spoke to make it look kind of like the sun or like 75 spokes to make it look more star like star light no I was right the first time star like um, or you can change the color so let's go to my standard 0 ff 6 0 and now it's that bright green color and you can change the alpha so that it's slightly transparent so yeah let's do that next one is lens flare which is similar to uh, supernova except it's a different shape so, uh, where is it? That's fair. I walked right past it, or I moved right past it. So let's move that there. And so as you can see, there's the lens flare effect. And you can change its position as well. Next one is drop shadow. And actually, to show the effectiveness of drop shadow, I'm going to have to use a different image. So let me go into my history and open up the no background image and filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. And so as you can see, there's now a little shadow and you can change the color of the shadow so you could make it a red shadow, but I'm just gonna keep it as a black shadow and you can change how far away the shadow is so the further away it is the more the further the uh, image looks like it is from the background so let's change that back to 20 and you can change the blur radius so now it's barely visible because it's blurred so far and now it's sharper I actually like that sharper blur so or sharper uh, shadow so let's go back to that so that's the lens flare there's the shadow and next we are moving on to noise so noise CIE ick noise I don't de generally deal with CIE ick I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right it could be itch it could be hike um but I think that's a different color um, color space, kind of like RGB, which is red, green, blue, or um, HSV, which is hue, saturation, and value, or CMYK, which is cyan, yellow, magenta, black. So you can change the lightness and the chroma and the hue, which the Okay, so chroma is how much color is in it. It's kind of like uh, saturation. Hue is what color it is. And lightness is how bright it is or not. So as we scroll in, we can see that at the hue, 
as we change this, the pixels, the colors of the pixels that we're seeing are different. As we do chroma, you can see how the color increases and decreases. And as we do lightness, you can see how it gets darker and brighter. So let's keep it there. Oh, and this one has a random seed, so you can actually click new seed and it randomly generates it. Or you can type one in and it uses that number for the noise generation. The next one is HSV noise, which is very similar, except instead of using the CIE ick color space, we're using HSV. So hue is the same thing. Saturation is like chroma and value is like lightness. And as with before, you can change the new seed every time I clicked new seed it had to restart the generation and so if we can scroll in here hue is changing the colors that we're seeing saturation changes how much color and value changes how bright or how dim it is now there's also dulling which as we scroll out it's generating more and more so dulling you can see as we set dulling to one there's a lot more pixels, but as we set dulling to um, eight, there's a lot less pixels that it's generating over top. So let's click OK. And now it's actually generating without the preview, so it can generate the whole thing without and show it at once. Then the final uh, filter that I'll, er, the final noise filter that I'll be doing is RGB noise which is that's light and shadow let me go back to noise which is the same concept except red green and blue and you can do a new seed with that as well so then we're on to render so all the way down here to render and let's go to noise and do plasma And so plasma, from what I understand, doesn't, so with my experience with the render filters, it doesn't seem like it cares what the image underneath is. All the other filters modify the active layer. The render filters doesn't care what the active layer is because it either replaces the active layer or it creates a new layer on top of it. So plasma creates this nice random color which you can click new seed and it's actually taking longer to um, generate for me because I this image that I'm using is 2160 by 2160 so if you're using a smaller image it will um, generate a lot faster I was just picking an image that I already had on my hard drive you can change the turbulence so let's raise it up and there's a lot more detail in it and you can lower the turbulence and there's a lot less detail in it so let's click OK next render filter is also a render noise and it is solid noise and this creates a grayscale image that you can change the size to put more or less detail into it. And there's actually a detail. So you can make it have all the detail in it or be completely blurred. And you can use the size to make it so that you see a little bit of it or a whole lot of it. And as always, new seed. So let's set that to that. Okay. And those two replaced the current layer. So but the final filter I'm going to go through right now is lava. 
And so the way Lava works is it does not have a, a preview because, well, I'm not entirely sure why it doesn't have a preview. But let's make the seed 20, the size 20, and sure, let's, oh, I just accidentally replaced the gradient. I actually wanted to keep the gradient. So since I don't know what gradient that was, it was a fiery one. Let's use abstract too and click OK. And so now it's creating the layer and you can actually see the different um, parts of GIMP that it's using to create the layer, the different equations that it's affecting. And there's the new lava layer. And I'm thinking that I might want to try that again. Uh, so Let's go back to the defaults, 10, 10, and incandescent, is that the thing? Let's click OK and run through that process again. So I can do this over and over and over again because it's creating a new layer. And so as you can see over at the side, there's the second lava layer, and as it's applying each subfilter, so let's remove that, and so now this is a more darker lava layer but you can mess around with those settings nope that's not the one I wanted you can mess around with these settings to change how the outcome looks so let's do one more lava layer and see what it turns out to be so actually let me turn this off and maybe I'll get to see it as it's generating. Oh, nope, it says not responding. Something's happening. Maybe I broke it. Let's exit out of that. Uh, close cancel plug-in crashed okay well at least we have this layer or this much on the layer but we have these two lava layers as well oh um I think I broke it so as long as you don't exit out of the um, thing prematurely, it should be fine. Maybe if I... I'm just gonna... Nope, it's still making it. Okay, so that was different GIP, GIMP filters. I'm not entirely sure why what GIMP is freaking out about right now. I don't know how it expects me to fix this. Um, so this doesn't usually happen. It, that's just because my I exited out of the plugin uh, pop-up. But now you know how to use a bunch of GIMP filters and so it should make it easier for, for um, my next tutorials um, that involve filters you already know how to use the filters that I will be most likely using. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Links are down in the description. Till next time. Bye.